Hello, my friends. Uh, today I want to share you some of my thoughts about eddy turns and uh, for the back rafters. Mm, in the Nordic countries, usually people they go like multi-day trips. They want to move from A to B. They can be a little bit hiking, paddling in calm water in lake systems, some calm rivers and having some white water. And uh, usually the white water is a little bit new element for pack rafters. We don't have any kayaking, white water kayaking experiences. And uh, it's really good uh, it's, it's to take a white water course with kayak or something to learn or have uh, friends who are going to teach you. But I won't, uh, I won't go there now. Uh, so I want to share you my thoughts about why we should need to uh, train more the uh, eddy turns and there I have a uh, five reason for that but I want to say that I'm not a whitewater kayaking instructor in any ways and I even suck in the eddy turns myself I know some of the basics behind the eddy turns and the theory and uh, I have some experience I used to also go the wilderness trips and I Usually the Nordic Rapids, they are short. After the rapid, there's a calm section. So I didn't want to take any unnecessary risks. And we usually just went through the rapids, smashing through. And it's re really easy with the pack raft because uh, it's so stable. I could put my granny sitting in the pack raft, pushing her to the glass to rapid and she would do great. So... Why do we actually need the eddy turns? I have five reasons for you. And uh, number one is safety. It's a little bit with the uh, same with, uh, with the car. If you are driving a big road and you're not able to drive away from the road, then you're not the uh, captain of, of the car. You're just going down. It's same with the uh, backdraft. You should be able to maneuver and uh, be the captain. So if you are not able to go away from the main current where you want to go, it's dangerous. And it's, it's one of the most basic skills you just need to have. Number two is navigate. Moving eddy to eddy, making eddy turns, it makes you easy to navigate in the river. Of course, if the rapid looks just a little bit too, too scary for you, have to scout it from the shore. Or if the rapid is too long and you can't see when it ends, you need to scout it from the shore. But when you're comfortable with going to the rapid, uh, navigating is easy when you turn to the eddy, you stop. You can uh, watch where you're going, make your decisions about the next lines. Because you always have to think a couple of moves ahead of when where you, where, where you are going so you can see if there is rocks obstacles whatever and it's easy to go there number three improve your skills with making these editors like your default way of moving in the white water you're going to improve your skills a lot oh, my cat is coming here uh, uh, I, I think I uh, I think I lost about two years of my back rafting for not doing that, so I didn't uh, improve my skills a lot. So, number four, fun. It's so much fun to go ready to ready. It's so much fun to improving your skills. It's so much fun to have more challenge. It's so much fun when you can stay in, in one rabbit longer time and just play, having fun, swim and improve your skills. Number five, it's to look cool. When you are a pack rafter, the most important thing is that you look cool. You can grow a beard like me and it's done, but uh, maybe easier way, this it takes like a couple of years to grow. Uh, easier way is to really have a nice technical skills. And when people are watching your skills, they are watching that, wow, that guy is cool. He can paddle. Oh yeah. I have a 
paper here so I, I don't miss anything. Uh, I can show you in the paper I actually made in this era of, uh, of uh, digitalization. I made the background from wood. Uh, I have it actually in my pocket. I have a wooden background here and a paddle. And I made a piece of paper so I can show you some basic whitewater maneuvers. Okay, when you're packrafting like the nature waters, it's really dynamic environment and there is flow going all over the places. And usually the beginners just think that the water flows from up to down and that's it. But no, it's more complicated. So as I said, here you can see the river. There is the main current going down here in the middle. It's not always in the middle, it can be in the side or anything. And uh, here is some rocks. So eddy is basically, it's a calm place behind some obstacle like rocks. It could be anything else also. So the flow in the eddy, it goes actually backwards. It, it goes the different direction than the main current. When the rock is there, the current is, it could be going over the rock or it can be pushing the sides or it can go under the rock when it's dangerous, but we don't go there now. And behind the rock, the water is pushing you that way or it can be completely calm. So the basic thing was just you're floating here, going straight down. Uh, it's really easy. But making an eddy turn is a little bit more complicated. This is now really small rapid and a small narrow river, but I show you the basics. Um, I think the most basic skill is ferry gliding. You can use that, for example, entering from either side of the river to the other side. So I show the basics how it's how that it's done. So here goes the main flow in the middle of the river. Here we have the safe place to eddy. The flow is a little bit going that way, so you can actually be here safe, just sitting down, enjoying. An eddy line is the area between the eddy and the main flow. So this is unstable water. This is thing where you capsize the most easily. So the trick is you have to cross this orange area really fast. Let's say that you're here and you want to go behind this rock here in the other side of the river. So what you have to do I, I, has, uh, I give you a sample what not to do. If you're this way paddling straight here what happens here the main current takes you and uh, it tries to turn you a little bit like this way and usually you capsize here. Uh, first thing is you want to go over this orange area really fast. So if you want to go behind this rock you usually start a little bit higher up and you need an angle a little bit like uh, one o'clock or 45 degrees. It depends a little bit. You can feel it usually quite fast when you're making a maneuver. So you start from this point and you take as much speed here as you need. It's usually like four strokes and you could be in your full speed already. When you are in this part you want to have a paddle stroke here and the last paddle stroke in the main current. When you have the paddle here, this stream is pushing you that way and you get the power. If your paddle is in here, it could be that you capsize here because it's so unstable water or if it's in the eddy, so the flow is pushing you that way, you can't get any, any power to your stroke. So make like a four fast maneuvers here and paddle in main current. What happens when you are here in the eddy line, this current is pushing you 
uh, let's say we are in this point. The current is pushing you, but you're also pull, uh, pushing you in the side here. Don't put your paddle in this side, because then usually the float pushes it under the boat and you can capsize. You can take speed here, one stroke, two stroke and you're in this side. So have the, when you're coming backwards, also almost 45 degrees, ferry glide, ferry glide, ferry glide. And then let's go to the main thing, the eddy turn. Let's say that you're coming upstream, upstream here. You want to turn an eddy turn here behind the rocks. So what you have to do, you have to come a little bit from this side, river left. You want to have your momentum to that side. If you start from the river right, you are going with the flow this way. It's pushing you here. And then when you have, are turning back here, it makes you way below where you want. So start with river left if you want to make uh, edit turn to the right, river right. You don't have to go like 50 meters in this side because you need just like a couple of good strokes and you have the momentum. So you can battle from here. And you're thinking before the eddy that, okay, I need to go there and turn yourself again about 40 de 45 degrees against that eddy line and paddle here and in this point this current is pushing your front of the backraft that way so it turns you automatically here it helps if you a little bit lean to inner it makes a bigger curve also, if you need to make a really fast edit, uh, edit turn, when you come here, you're paddling, put your stroke here behind the rock, where the flow is pushing that way, and lean and voila, you're making like a handbrake turn there. Easy. But when you're trying to learn this, it makes a lot of time just uh, the usual problem is that you're starting to turn too late. You're already here. You're watching. I want to do the eddy. You make the right angle, start to paddle, but you're down here already, so you're too late. Start here early. Have momentum to the right place, and remember to take paddle down in where you have the eddy current and lean easy uh, that is eddy out and making eddy in it's a little bit same as the ferry gliding take your speed that you're crossing this unstable eddy line really fast have your ferry gliding angle try to have your paddles like the timing is uh, important you have a almost like last uh, stroke here and when you're stroking here you start can lean again and actually when the current again it pushes here it turns you automatically this way so this is the safe way to go out and in eddy and you're using the current as your power yeah that's basically it enjoy your editors